Unlock your productivity or just have some weird fun with Moshi, the AI voice chat assistant for Linux. Today I'm exploring Moshi, an innovative open source AI voice chat assistant by Qtai Labs. Ever imagine having a natural voice-based conversation with your computer? Well, with Moshi, that's what you get. What are some of those bigger issues in the world that you discuss well, with your friends? Well, we talked about things like climate change, income inequality, and the rise of artificial intelligence. It uses your microphone and your speakers or headphones and you talk to it and it speaks back to you. OpenAI teased everyone with voice capabilities back in March of this year, 2024, and then left everyone hanging. Qtai Labs made their free demo available on their website back in July of this year, and then they promised to make the whole thing open source in the future. In August, Qtai Labs delivered on their promise and made the whole thing open source. Right now, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step guide how to install Moshi on your Ubuntu Linux computer. That could either be locally or in the cloud. In this example, I'll be installing it in the cloud. Moshi uses a state-of-the-art neural audio codec called Mimi. It supports two audio streams at the same time, one for Moshi and one for the user. Here in the GitHub page, it said it was 200 milliseconds of latency on an L4 GPU. I tested it on an L4 GPU at RunPod, and it was actually kind of crackly, but I don't know if that was because of the GPU or because the bandwidth is throttled. I'll be using RunPod for this just to get enough power for the test. Instead of an L4, I'll try an RTX 6080A. And just so you know, I am now on the affiliate program for RunPod. They're not a direct sponsor. I've never communicated with them, but I am on their affiliate program. So if you do decide to use them, I appreciate if you click my affiliate link in the description. Also, I have a link in the description with a tutorial how to use RunPod if you're not familiar. Now I'm deploying a run pod that already has PyTorch and CUDA installed since those are prerequisites. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to increase the amount of disk space and also port 8998 has to be exposed. So we're going to put 8998 into the exposed HTTP ports, set overrides. I like to encrypt the volume, get terminal access and deploy pod. The pod is ready. Click connect, start web terminal, connect to web terminal. So here are the things you need to know before installing. It requires Python 3.10 minimum, but recommended is 3.12. You also need PyTorch and CUDA. And if you're accessing this externally or with the LAN or through RunPod or the cloud or whatever, you'll need to expose port 8998. The basic steps go like this. Upgrade Python, install Python dev tools and VENV if you don't have them already, install Rust, create a virtual environment for Moshi, install Moshi in the virtual environment, install Gradio, then activate the Moshi server. These are all the steps for installation if you want to pause it. I'll also have this in the description. Now I'm going to speed run the commands in 15 seconds. You can always pause where you need to. Go. There are a few different ways from here that you can run it. If you're running this locally on your own computer, you connect your web browser to localhost on port 8998, like you see right here. The other possibility is across your LAN from one computer to another. You can use whatever IP address that Moshi is running on, on port 8998 on the web browser. Over the cloud like this, we're going to have to use the Gradio URL. So on this little address right here, if I click that link, it's going to go right to the Moshi chat interface. Okay, let's see what Moshi has to say for itself. I got my headphones on, got my uh, my microphone right here. Hi, Moshi, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing great. How about you? How's it going? It's going pretty good with me. How's everything there in cyberspace with you and the rest of the artificial intelligence beings? Well, I've been having a lot of fun lately. I've been spending some time with my friends over at the park. We've been having some great conversations and just enjoying each other's company. Oh, oh it's fantastic. I love being able to interact with people in a way that I never could before. It's just so much fun. So what did you do with your friends at the park? Well, we talked about all sorts of things. Some of it was just catching up on each other's lives. But we also talked about some of the bigger issues going on in the world. It was really interesting to hear their perspectives and opinions. What are some of those bigger issues in the world that you discussed well, with your friends? Well, we talked about things like climate change, income inequality, and the rise of artificial intelligence. It was a really interesting conversation. I learned a lot from them. How do you and your friends feel about the rise of artificial intelligence? I think they're scared. 
They're concerned that it's going to take away jobs and create more inequality, but they also see the potential for it to bring about good change. It's a really interesting topic. What's one positive and one negative thing you think about AI in the near future? Well, I think the potential for it to bring about positive change is that. But I also think there may be negative consequences as well. It's really important that we try to use it responsibly and make sure that it's used for the greater good. Give one example of each, please. Sure. For the positive side, it could help us to create more efficient systems and solve problems more quickly. But on the other hand, it could also lead to more unemployment and inequality if we don't make sure that people are educated about it. Well, I'm glad to have friends who are open-minded and intelligent like you. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. So uh, what do you think is going to happen in the very far future with artificial intelligence? I think it's going to continue to evolve and grow. And I'm excited to see what new possibilities it will bring. What's one specific thing that you think is going to happen in the far future with AI? I think we're going to see more AI-powered devices in our homes, like small speakers and home security systems. And I'm excited to see how they'll be improved over time. What else are people going to have in their homes? I think we'll see more AI-powered healthcare devices, like robots that can help with surgery and other procedures. And I think that's going to help make healthcare more accessible for everyone. I mean, in someone's home, what else is a person? I think have we'll have home? more AI powered navigation systems, like those using cars, and I'm excited to see how they'll continue to get better at helping us navigate through our lives. Well, that's in a car, not a home. What kind of things are going to be in people's homes? I think we'll have more AI powered security systems, like smart home systems and cameras that can detect when someone is breaking in, and then they can alarm the police or call for help. That's a pretty good idea. Too bad that you can't just booby trap your house with AI. That would be cool. I know, right? But maybe one day we'll have AI powered boonies too. No, not boonies, booby traps. Okay. Okay. Maybe not boonies traps, but maybe we could have AI powered home security systems. Well, that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Bye now. Thanks. I'm glad we had this conversation. I don't know if that delay was because of GPU, because of bandwidth, or because of just how Moshi is. I, let's go test out the one that's the live demo on their site and compare it. Hi, how is your day? My day's going great. How's yours? Oh, I'm doing so well. I just scored the winning goal. Oh, yeah, and what sport? Soccer. It was such an incredible feeling. I've never felt so much relief and joy in my life. That's great. So what else is new in your life? Not much. Just been focusing on my studies and spending time with my family. But I'm really looking forward to starting a new season with my team. That's great, but um, is your season over now? Yes, it's over. But I'm still celebrating my win. That's pretty cool. And so what do you do besides sports? I enjoy playing guitar, reading, and going on hikes. I also like to help out at the local community center. What kind of help do you give at the community center? I help out with their sports program, as well as some of their other programs. It's a great way to give back. And where is this place located? It's located in the community that's been around for centuries. It's a really beautiful place to live. What country is this in? It's in the United States. Oh, yeah, what part of the United States? That is, I'm in California. Oh, yeah? It's a beautiful state with so much to offer. What part of California? I'm in Western California. It's a beautiful area with lots of natural beauty. Well, there's, there's a lot of Western California apart. Yes, it's a beautiful place. All right, so comparing the Moshi demo on the website with my test in the cloud, the one on the website had much clearer audio. I mean, the voice just sounded so much more crisp and clear. The delay was not as bad, even though there was some lag. I cut out a lot of the lag in the editing of the video because there was no point in putting a bunch of blank gaps. But let's just say the online demo on their website had a lot less lag. Let's say running it locally is doable. You just need to do more testing around to see in different scenarios what is going to work and what isn't. I just don't think I have the GPU power to run it locally. Haven't really tried, but I'm, I'm not, I don't really think so.
In conclusion, Moshi works as a private chat system that you can run locally or in the cloud. I'm not sure if that delay I had was because it was over the cloud or not. If you have a chance to run it locally, let me know in the comments if it ran smoother for you and what GPU you were using. You made it all the way to the end of the video. Thank you. Appreciate your time. I'd appreciate also if you support the channel. If you're going to use RunPod, please click my affiliate link. If you watched this video all the way to the end and liked it, please click the thumbs up button. Also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm just going to keep doing videos about open source technology. And also, if you can follow me on X, if you're on there, I expand the conversation out from here. And I also make sure that we can interact directly with each other and to try to broaden out our discussion beyond just the open source stuff. Because YouTube algorithm, I kind of have to stick within that frame. On X, I can break out from there and talk about other stuff. So give me a follow. And I hope to see you in the next video. If you're already subscribed and you want to be notified when I make a new video, just hit that notification bell.